Hey there, in this video I'm going to go over the Font Atlas Creator uh, and all the different options that are in there. So let's begin by opening the Font Asset Creator, which we have here. So the first thing we're going to do is pick a font source. So I'm going to open this and pick Impact, for example. Uh, I'm going to hit Preview so I can talk about the various options. So Preview obviously allows you to preview the font. Uh, based on the settings that are currently selected. So the first thing we're going to look at is the font size. So when using auto sizing, uh, the plugin will uh, on its own try to optimize and find the largest size that will fit uh, within the given area. So in this case it was 76 points. But if for some reason, let's say you didn't want to use the sign distance field stuff, and you wanted a bitmap font and you needed it to be of a specific size then you could always come in here and pick let's say like 48 or something and then as you can see it generates the font on that new size okay so I'll leave it on auto sizing font padding is um, basically the spacing between the characters so if I go preview again and I'll increase it let's say to 16 and then you're going to see that we now have more space between the characters. Obviously, as we increase the space, ultimately the font size that we're able to fit in is a lot smaller. Um, now, font padding, when you're using sign distance field, translates to also spread. Um, and the spread is basically, uh, think about it as the, uh, not necessarily resolution, but the number of steps that we get distance calculations. So the the higher the spread, the more steps we have in the distance calculation, which means when we're trying to do the glow um, and trying to get a maximum range or make the glow go further, a larger spread is good. Now, the problem with a larger spread is obviously if I use a larger spread, it's like equivalent of more spacing. So my font size will be smaller, which means the sampling to get the quality in will be lower. So it's sort of a, a trade-off and a balancing act between the two. Now, typically with sign distance field, um, we use for most fonts five. Um, sometimes we'll use seven or eight. It is rare that you'll exceed uh, something like 10. I mean, you, you need to have like a super large glow area or really thick uh, outline for that. So for most application, five is fine. Uh, seven or whatever stuff anything above that it's got to be a special need and on your own you can experiment with that so I'll leave it at five for the time being and I'm just gonna hit preview again so we see our font the Atlas resolution um, you can pick both horizontally and vertically um, different sizes and right now it's gonna try to fit everything in a 256 by 512 we usually keep it at 512 by 512 um, the only reason to go to a larger size is if you have a particularly challenging font, um, something like Jokerman or something with a pattern in it, and it's got some really high frequency details and changes. Um, but for most fonts, 512 by 512 is fine. The other reason to go larger is if you're trying to fit a larger character set, like uh, Korean, Japanese, Chinese, uh, then if you're just trying to pack more characters, you would increase that size. ASCII character uh, set, Basically, you get to pick what set you're going to raster. So right now, we're rastering the whole ASCII set. I can pick just the lowercase, for example, or just the uppercase characters. We can pick numbers and symbols. So if you were to do something like floating text or damage numbers or whatever, uh, this is an example of how you can uh, just raster those. And since the sampling is like 134 point size, then you're going to get you know more pristine looking fonts. Now, when I say more pristine, again, we're dealing with sign distance field. It's already really accurate, so sometimes the difference is kind of marginal. Again, you're back to if you're using a font that's got high frequency changes, like, you know, or a pattern, then it becomes more uh, important to maximize the size here. Next, we've got custom range. So custom range allows you to specify a range of characters that you'd like to raster. So for example, I want to go from, uh, uh, let's say just for fun, 65 is the letter A. So I'll go from 65 to 70. So if I hit preview, then we generated A, B, C, D, E, F. Now, if I want to increase the range, let's say I have multiple range. So 65 dash 70, uh, 80 uh, dash 95, 
and so on and so forth. Now we see these additional characters. So if you want to include like the ASCII set plus the Cyrillic or some expanded Latin characters, you would enter the range right here. Uh, the next option is custom character. Well, custom character is sort of the opposite of a range where you can actually type the characters that you want to raster. Uh, what's nice with this one is you can actually cut and paste uh, from some other applications. So if you wanted to cut and paste some uh, Japanese characters and so on and so forth, you could do that here. The next option is a list. So you can basically import, if I pick this option, uh, you can add a list so I'm not sure I have a list here, but assuming I did, you'd find um, I, there's one in the basic package uh, and the care and there you go character list or commas. Um, I believe no, they're not even comma separated. It's just a list of the characters, and once you enter that in and hit preview, then it rasters these characters. Um, so this is useful if you're going to have multiple languages. Um, and you're trying to minimize or maximize how many you can fit in an atlas, then you know just build some utility to parse through all the text that it's going to be in your game and just raster those characters specifically. So now we're going to go back to ASCII. Um, font style. Uh, so let's go back to this. So font style, uh, normal, uh, that's what it is. Um, we can pick bold. Now this number two here, if I pick bold, you'll see that the characters are bold. The two specifies how much to basically inflate the character. Okay, uh, so italic, um, we've got bold italic and so on and so forth. These options are more significant for a bitmap font because with sign distance field, we can do the bold um, automatically using the distance field shaders. So again, this is more for bitmap options. The only one that's kind of cool to play with is the outline uh, for distance field because you can create just an outline. So it's a reverse of the thing. And that one's kind of neat. Uh, I've played with that one once in a while, but that's what that option does. Okay, back to normal. Next, these are the raster modes. So hinted smooth is anti-aliased. Um, smooth is basically same thing, but no hinting. Um, raster hinted is a binary uh, font. You can see here there's no anti-aliasing anymore, um, but it's still hinted. Raster is the same thing, but uh, just raster, no hinting. Uh, distance field, well, that one will produce the distance field of the font itself. And the 16 refers to the upsampling. Now, uh, some people are saying, hey, look, it looks fuzzy and not clean. Well, um, in a distance field um, font, this atlas and the grayscale, the alpha, doesn't represent transparency. In this case, it represents distance to an edge. Um, so it looks fuzzy, but we're not using this in terms of the visual thing. We're using distances, and the distance is encoded in the alpha. Um, so what the 16 is, it's an upsample by 16. So in this case, the font is 73. So when we're rastering each character to compute the distance field, we're going to take that 73 times 16. That's how big the font or the character is going to be. And then we calculate the distance field on that size. Um, so basically, distance field 32 upscales it 32 times so we get an even more accurate distance calculation. And that's what it is. So what we're seeing here, it's multi-threaded. Uh, so depending on the number of cores you have and so on and so forth, the speed will vary. Things that affect the speed is basically your padding. So the greater the padding, the further we need to go to compute this spread and this distance. The further we have to go, the longer it's going to take. The second thing is your atlas resolution also factors into all of this. But again, padding slash spread uh, with distance field, you don't need to go above 5, 8, or something of that nature. Um, again, the best way to play with this is pick a number like 5, generate the font, take a look at it, then go back, do it with 7 or 8, and compare the letters and see if you notice a big difference, and then you just get to pick the one you want to use. Preview. So let me go back here. So we've already seen what preview does. This progress bar shows the progress. There's no way to stop it. It launches the threads in the background. I'll look into that. But if you were to close the 
uh, font atlas creator the thing would probably just blow up because we started all these tasks and stuff is being computed and then it wants to send it back to this um, font atlas creator which is gone and bad things will occur so don't close it while it's doing its thing let it finish the process um, now if it's gonna if you made a huge mistake like you meant to type 5 and you typed 50 yeah just close it and you know the crash will occur but that's fine it beats waiting half an hour or 45 minutes which is what it could take if you push the padding to like 50 um, so next whenever you generate a font let's say I'm picking the ASCII set it will tell me look the ASCII set is 95 characters and we did fit 95 so for example if I go to auto sizing um, 76 is what fits let's say I said well give me 80 right we know it won't fit now it reports back hey I try to fit 95 but I can only fit 83 of them and the color of the little text changes when it tells you it can't fit um, another thing that's important here is if I pick a different font um, like this uh, uh, whatever font it is anymore I can't remember the name it G uh, whatever it is so uh, gang of three sorry uh, brain fart there um, so if I generate here we'll go back to auto size I'm picking the full ASCII set and I hit to render it says hey you know out of the 95 I only produce 78 that's because um, the TTF itself is actually missing characters which is why they're not all there so it's always good to take a look at this because it gives you a sense of what characters may not exist in the package uh, the next option I forgot that one so when you select this this allows you to get the kerning pairs that are with the font on the PC that works on the Mac right now that's not implemented but uh, the reason why I'm not stressing over it not being implemented on a Mac is most public domain fonts or a lot of the fonts that I've played with don't have the kerning pairs in there anyway. And inside of TextMesh Pro, let me close this. Uh, just a side note, if I navigate to my fonts um, right here and I pick, let's say, Arial, um, my panel is like way expanded let me shrink this a little bit but if I go to the kerning pairs here it's really easy to add them um, so my suggestion is even if you don't import them I typically don't import them because uh, for some fonts like Arial there could be like 400 of them um, and you're just making your asset bigger and in the end uh, I find that for the text that I do the ones that I need are usually missing um, so I manually enter them and the way that works uh, I'll do a separate video but it's really straightforward you simply type uh, I guess I'll digress for a fraction of a second uh, well more than a fraction of a second but let's go to game object create other text mesh pro we have our hello world let's say we wanted to add a kerning pair between uh, I guess W and O we would come here type W which is the capital one uh, then I would type O and then I would add the kerning pair once it's added I can basically go here and, and move it around now it's not changing that's because if I go here uh, enable kerning is disabled so now I'm gonna go back to my Arial font uh, we're interested in this one here so now you can see that I can manually adjust the kerning for that pair and this does it for all the font basically every asset that's going to use this Arial and all the derived materials from it. Um, it would be extremely weird or, or rare that you would need to have different kerning for the same letters on the same font. If you did happen to need that, you could always clone this Arial uh, custom asset and then they each would have their own separate kerning pairs. So anyway, so that was sort of a digression here but back to the font atlas creator so this is how you get the kerning pairs let me go back to a font again I'll pick a different one um, so preview we talked about this we talked about this part so when you hit save it basically will save the asset based on what it is so in this case it's not an SDF so the name will be bangers.asset because it's not an SDF if it was an SDF rendered with this it would add the SDF in the naming um, of it and that way it just keeps it cleaner and it's easier to recognize which ones are SDF or not um, next okay this section here is gonna be confusing only because it's there um, before the latest implementation of TextMesh Pro 
um, we were using a different method to compute the sign distance field. Instead of using a binary font, which is what we use, uh, we were using basically um, this version, which is the hinted smooth, which has aliasing on it. And then this is an alternative algorithm to generate the distance field. In this case, it will generate a spread of four and it would downscale it. So instead of upscaling, what we would do is produce it at a larger size and then downscale it as opposed to producing it smaller, upsizing it. Um, now this algorithm is a faster algorithm. As you can see, it like went really fast, um, but there's some errors introduced into downscale. So um, this is mostly there for development. Um, and the way it works is it takes whatever is rendered here. So if I render this, it will then process this one. If this one here turned out to be a sign distance field, as we're computing now, and then I process this, we're making an SDF of an SDF, which uh, is not valid and it's broken. And you can see here, it looks horrible. That's because we made a sign distance field of a sign distance field atlas, which just doesn't work. Um, this option, we were also using it because uh, sign distance field is cool for text, but you could have a logo, a shape, or something that you could process. Now the option to process a shape is gone, but I'm keeping this code in there in case we decide to revive that option. Um, for the shipping version, I'll likely uh, hide this panel in the code and comment it out so that way it won't confuse people. But that's why it's there. Um, so right now, just focus on these. Preview, I guess, when you're hitting uh, sign distance field, it's not really a preview, it's actually generating it and then you can save it. Uh, so that's, uh, I guess, 16 minutes of me babbling about all that stuff. Hopefully, uh, this was informational or instructional, um, or I guess, informative. I guess it's uh, 12, uh, 17, and I had three hours of sleep last night, so I'm, uh, I'm uh, missing out on some stuff right now. But anyway, hopefully this was good. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, comment, uh, and thanks for watching.